welcome back to the channel and if you're new to the channel and if you like the content that you see on this YouTube channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button after you hit that subscribe button you'll be notified of the videos that I post on this channel brand new ones so without further ado let me get into what this video is all about okay in this video or voice recording I'm going to be reading something from Happier Abroad the Happier Abroad site slash forum online it's a blog of the Happier Broad site. And it's, and it's titled, well, it's a post on this, and it's titled, Eight Reasons Why Modern Americans Seem Soulless and Inhuman. And it was posted on Monday, the 26th date, day of August of 2013. And this is from Happier Broad, and Happier Broad is ran by its owner, Winston Wu. I'm no stranger to him. He commented on he commented on one of my videos in the past on his channel, and he posted some of these videos on his channel on, on his on his forum. So, you know, the last time I got a message from him, he posted a message saying that, what happened to your channel? And this is from him, and I don't know why he sent that to me. Maybe because I'm not talking about the things that he's talking about, I guess. You know, I like to be different in my channel. You know, I can talk about Winston Wu-related stuff. But I can talk about other stuff. I, I can mix it up. I guess he just didn't like it. So, you know, I have no idea what this man is thinking and what goes through his head. I don't know. <laughs> he's Maybe he's busy. He probably is. But, you know, I'm not going to worry about him. Okay, but I'm going to be reading one of his old posts that he posted on his on his forum eight reasons why modern americans seem soulless and inhuman posted on the 26th date or day of august of 2013 i'm going to go ahead and read all of this and give my thoughts on this <clears throat> Let me let me clear my throat. OK, eight reasons why modern Americans seem soulless and inhuman. And it reads as follows. Have you ever noticed but never dared to tell anyone about it? That that modern Americans seem soulless and inhuman as if they lack warmth and feeling well, it's not all in your head. Even TV shows and movies reflect this. You might have noticed that the TV shows and movies from the 1960s and 1970s had a very different char had very different characters from today. The characters in those days exclu inclu excluded included kindness, warmth, feeling, and had strong morals. The main characters were never assholes, even if they were action heroes. They cared about others and were nice and friendly, like you like people you you'd be glad to hang out with. And they had an air of familiarity to them, like they were part of your family. Viewers felt an emotional attachment to them. Love and drama scenes 
scenes were full of genuine emotion and feeling. Even the music in older, even the music in older TV shows and movies was very romantic. But modern TV shows and movies have cold, uncary, uncaring, greedy characters that seem soulless, inhuman, and devoted of feeling or, war or warmth. All they care about is acting tough and badass, with no emotional investment in them. You don't even care if they live or die. Sadly, I guess that reflects the attitude of of young modern Americans, or is it, or is supposed to? Young modern Americans, more like people in their in their twenties, their thirties, in their forties. It's kind of like that 1978 sci-fi horror movie, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, with Donald Sutherland. In that great classic film, alien pods rep replicate humans on Earth into alien clones who are devoid of any emotion or feeling. At the end, everyone in the city of San Francisco was turned into soulless, inhuman clones. You gotta wonder if filmmakers were trying to tell us something, since the film scenario is so chilling, accurately, depicts modern America. Plus, the humans only get replicated when they go to sleep, which was a great pun, whatever it attended or not. Yeah, on, yeah, on Facebook, Winston Wu wanted me to um, download the movie Invasion of the Body Snatchers onto my computer so I can watch it and give my thoughts on it to him. And, you know, I did that. I told one I think of the movie. And I still got that movie um, downloaded. Well, it's, it's already downloaded. It's stored on the hard drive of my computer. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Many foreigners and soulful aware people have observed to me that. Let me start. Let me start over again. Yeah, I'm reading this on my smartphone. It's jumping. It's just jumping all over the place. Many foreigners and soulful, soulful, aware people have observed to me that Americans seem to lack soul and have only money <clears throat> and only have money in their eyes. It's as if the life force has been drained or sucked out of them. Now, I don't see how it would be even be possible to suck out the soul or life force of an entire nation. So I can only wonder if something out of this world is going on at a higher or deeper level of reality. Reality is a multi-layer reality is multi-layered after all with both physical and non-physical layers. It's as if invisible extra, dim extra dimensional forces are at work. However, since I cannot speculate on things unseen, I can only try to find more physical earthly reasons and causes. So here are some that I offer based on my spectrum and educated guesses. Number one, Americans are conditioned to be single-minded about the purpose of life, which is to make money. They are taught that life is everything. They are taught that life and everything is all business. A workaholic lifestyle is considered to be the norm that one strives for. Such a narrow focus on life suppresses their creativity and imagination and makes them dull as well. In America, the pursuit of money has replaced the human soul. Thus, the eyes of Americans look empty and plastic, not soulful or passionate. Their eyes often look depressed too, as though 
they've been they've been worked and been over consuming too much with nothing else to live for. Well, you look in the eyes of, of, of any American in the US, you know, I saw this woman on TV. She was just she was some professor or doctor from somewhere in Washington state. She was white. She had long hair. She was kind of cute. Her eyes were just as big as saucers. And she just had this blank, unemotional look on her face. Like, she was just like completely out there. Like, she was just, she, she looked like a zombie. No emotion, no nothing. And her and these and these people on 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 um this was on P, on the PBS News Hour, her and, and these other people were talking about mass shooters, and talking about making schools safer by having like armed by having like you know being prepared for a, a, a active shooter and whatnot. And I look at this, I'm saying to myself, yeah, and seeing how you act. Like, you're the contributed factor to these mass shooters. And, like, yeah, it's like, you know, it's just like, no, nothing. Like, you know, yeah, I guess, um, I guess she was a doctor or, or whatever she was. I guess she supposed to act like that. Probably, yeah. Moreover, the ever-increasing high cost of living in America due to inflation and mayor practices of the Federal Reserve and banking elite, which has gone out of control, has further perpetrated the need for living a workaholic lifestyle to keep up. Most Americans don't realize how insane it is to live on a treadmill, though. They never stop to ask themselves this enlightening question. What's the point of making a living if all if all you do every day is work to make a living? I think that's a question. Sadly, I think that's a question Americans will never ask themselves. Or someone asked this question to them, they probably would just. Won't answer the question and just probably like just talk about something else. Or probably won't say anything. After all, there is no living to make if there's no time or freedom to live and do what you want is right. Thus the practice making a living becomes a self contradiction and oxymoron. Yeah, I remember some patriotic American that I went back and forth in the comments on a YouTube video he talked about full freedom and he brought up the US Constitution you know and talking about oh give more guns or more guns give more guns to the police are needed and have a gun to protect your family and like, how how is how is it how is that all freedom? That's not freedom. I mean, giving more guns to the police and and having more guns that will protect everybody from a mass shooter. Like, and just live in constant fear. And you know, and he was he was a bit of an asshole. And he and he gaslit me and talked about I was stroking my ego while I was giving him a passionate speech. Basically insulting my intelligence. And all of this because he didn't like me talking about America staying on as the 13 British colonies on the east coast of North America and merging into a different country. He didn't like that and he just turned that into a political debate. Which I find kind of puzzling and strange. There's Americans out there who talk about this and it's nothing. You know, I'm an American. That mean I'm an American. That means nothing to me. It's just a thought. But he but he but people like him just took it as a debate and an insult. 
was insulted, said I was ignorant, and he just went into a debate, and I was stupid enough to go back and forth with him. But he was a but he was just a miserable, patriotic American troll who has no life. You know, and he yeah, and he put me down when I told him I had a learning disability and he said that, oh, using your learning disability as an excuse, it's so pathetic. Then he gonna tell me this, use your disability to your advantage. Well, I'm gonna do that. I have no support. I'm being held down by my parents and being put down and denied denied of doing stuff that people my age are doing simply because I have a disability and my parents decided that it was a good idea just to treat me like a ch treat me like a child and just buy my groceries and everything for me which is kind of effed up and weird so I'm not going to get into that. Well, anyway, let me continue. Number two, Americans are conditioned to be mi militarist, materialistic, and diverse happiness from commermation and material possessions. Thus, their focus is on the external rather than the, than the in external. As a result, they do not accumulate their inner soul, inner self, or soul. And thus become soulless. This explains why people who are highly militarist, materialistic, seems to have empty soulless eyes with no inner self or spirit radiating within, and lack true and lack true passion as well. Americans also trade happiness for comfort. By the falling, by falling the system, rather than their soul. This is a big mistake because when you focus on bodily comforts and neglect the wishes of your soul, heart, or spirit, you deny yourself and live a very fake and on on an on a on on authentic life. And on the authentic life. Okay. Number three, Americans are conditioned to live in fear and paranoia. Someone told me this once cars run on fuel, Americans run on fear. The typical American mentality, personality, and attitude is in a state of, of fear consciousness. You can see it. In their, pers in their personality, body language, and vibe. Their media perpetrates fear by, feeling them, by feeding them bad news and tra tragedies every day. Studies show that the more you watch the news, the more paranoid you become, which is no surprise. Uh, actually, yeah, that's true. But also, you gotta think, um, think, nine eleven and mass shootings for that. You gotta, you gotta think that. Yeah, that's the problem right there. Yeah, and in, in the news gives that, and you know, the news here in America, even though it's local or national. You know, they don't talk about the real stories that are happening. You know, the problems within America and and what's going on in countries overseas. You know, Americans, when it comes to news, Americans don't care about what, what, what goes on overseas. What goes on in Europe, what goes on in other countries. They don't care. All they care about what goes on in, in their country. You know, and also when it comes to the news, there's so many subplots and storylines that, you know, that because, you know, America is a, is a big country. There's a lot of people who live here. You know, just, you know, and media, news, I won't say media. I mean, there's no media at all here. It's just, just lifestyle stories, um, 
talk show topic topic like formats you know and just silly stuff that's basically not relevant it's like this um uh, Americans are so interested in some uh, Armenian American family that lives in Los Angeles that's wealthy than then poor normal normal everyday people and all the problems that go on in this country which is real news yeah okay where, okay, where was I at? Du, 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 du. Okay, I'll just go ahead and read this. But even if you listen to the alternative media, they will still be fear-mongered because the alternative media tells them that their enemy is their own government and the lies, corruptions, and conspiracies of the powers that be. So they are always kept in fear of something, wherever by established sources or alternative sources. The thing is, having fear when there is real danger involved is normal and necessary for survival. But Americans are in the mode of fear about everything to the point where it dominates their state of mind and consciousness, becoming excessive and beyond reason. They even start to fear things that, that don't exist. As a result, they see every stranger as a potential psycho, criminal, or terrorist. Yeah, I got that vibe from people where I live. Some, not all of them. It just ba that, it just, I just basically get that from the women. And I get that from some men too. Yeah, some some man came to my house. He he rang the doorbell. I opened up the door. He stood as far away from the doorstep. Yeah, I guess because of COVID, I guess. I don't know. I guess he think I'm going to pull out a gun and shoot and kill him, I guess. I don't know. But he just came over here just to ask me, um, tell me that he's going to do, he's a guy that does work on people's driveways, you know, I'm, Lay down asphalt and redo people's drives, driveways of their homes to have cracks in them. And I told him I, I wasn't interested and he left. And I closed the door. So yeah, I see that. Okay. What's ironic is that in foreign countries where, where there is a higher level of danger and crime, people are not as paranoid. For example, Russia, Mexico, and the Philippines all have higher crime on their streets than America does. But yet the people there are not paranoid or in a constant state of fear at all. Yeah, if you live in a if you tire of crime, you get sick of it and you want something to be done about it, right? Not being not being scared, but being sick of it. In those countries, you can walk up to strangers, including women, and talk to them, and they will be relaxed and comfortable. Unlike Americans, they do not have imagery, f imagery fears. Rather, they are more in touch with reality, and their personalities are more down-to-earth. I would even virtue to guess that Americans project their fears and lack of and lack of freedom to other nations. <laughs> yeah, America does have a lack of freedom. Yeah, 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 yeah. An asshole American patriot gonna tell me about we we live in a country with a lot of freedom, full freedom, which is not true. Lack of freedom, no freedom at all. I can name one, the freedom of assembly, that doesn't exist in the U.S. That exists in countries like France, but not in the U.S. How can you talk about full freedom 
and you have like I say no freedom of the press no freedom of assembly like I said <laughs> and just guns a recipe for disaster they view people in other nations as living in fear being unkind and unfree while themselves while themselves are friendly warm and open even though the truth is the exact opposite yeah some people here in the states they love to lie lie about other countries they like to put down other countries and praise their country through the roof yeah it's just it's just sickening and it is yeah but you know other countries don't care about America's lame lame patriotic bullshit I don't care about it either the problem with being in a perpetual state of fear or being in fear consciously is that it lowers your energy and charka levels to a slow vibration which makes you less aware, less conscious, and impairs your ability to think clearly. It exhibits your potential for growth, creativity, openness, adventure, and new ideas. As a result, your soul slash spirit becomes low density and less vibrant. Rather than rather than being on fire, you feel weak and helpless. The constant is that fear narrows your mind. The more fearful you are, the more narrow the more narrow your mindset is. But the less fear you have, the more open minded you will you will be. And along with it, your imagination, creativity, and soul will blossom and expand as well. Number four, Americans are not curious, nor are they drawn to novelty. They prefer familiarity over novelty and lack curiosity. Thus, they are not drawn to new ideas, new people, and new things. Instead, they seek the familiar and the routine in people and things and do not trust the trust do not trust the unfamiliar. This explains why Americans are not comfortable with meeting new people and why they don't like talking to strangers unless it is for business purposes only. American social life is highly cliquish, which means that it is limited to within groups. They are closed and exclusive. Preferring familiarity, Americans only socialize with established friends and their social cliques and are not open with strangers. To strangers, they tend to be standoffish and distant, as if everyone is expected to mind their own business. The problem with social life being limited to cliques is that cliques, by nature, are closed and exclusive. Thus, the people with, within them are going to have an attitude and mentality that is closed and exclusive as well, or snobby and stuck up, in other words. Therefore, to fit into a clique, you have to be closed and exclusive yourself. Otherwise, if you have a hard time breaking in, in as you will not be on the same wavelength as the people in them. That's interesting to note is that when two American strangers run into each other in a foreign in a foreign country, they are more like they are more likely to start a conversation and ask questions about each other than if they met in America, which speaks volumes. This is especially the case with women in America. Studies show that women prefer familiarity where else, where else men are more drawn to novelty. Thus, women in America are more cliquish and socially closed when it comes to meeting new people and socializing with strangers. 
than men are. This is a constant pattern I've seen time and time again. No question about it. The significance here is that people who are more conscious, more open, seek new experiences and drawn it towards novelty, tend to be more passionate, creative, and imaginative than those who aren't. Thus they will seem they thus they will seem more soulful and alive as well. Number five, Americans are taught to only care about themselves, be independent, and not need others. As a result, they are socially disconnected and distant from others. As they say, every man is an island. By default, there is an island there is an ice barrier between strangers, hence the term breaking the ice. Americans don't talk to strangers unless it's business related. Most friendships are faceless and more of an inaccurate more than an acquaintance an acquaintance relationship than a true friendship. True friendship connection Carmenomity, love, romance, community, and family values don't exist in their natural form in modern America. In worldly, Americans are cold and unfeeling, abated with, with fake plastic smiles, as well as arrogant and asshole In fact, modern American television and films idolize characters who are uncaring assholes with no warmth, which reflect the typical modern American personality, sadly. In contrast, television shows in the past, before the 1990s, featured characters that were warm and caring. I guess to be truly independent and not need others, one has to become cold and uncaring. This makes them seem soulless as well. Yeah, um, this is weird. Um, I remember, you know, I remember my, um, my mother used to, my mother and my sister and my dad used to give me crap. They give me crap, they give me crap, they treat me like crap. They talk down to me, they walk all over me. You know, they get to me, you know, they, they, they keep pushing my buttons and I get up and snap at them. And my dad jumps up and say and say this. See, see, you got to see that you, you're mean, you're hateful. You got you got so much meanness in you. And my mother says the same thing, too. So that's kind of messed up. Uh, I'm mean and I snap at people because you guys made me made me like that. I didn't become this all by myself. You guys did this to me. But if I say this to them, they'll just blow it off like it's nothing. Like it's like it's basically me and it's not them. No, the truth is it's them. It's not me. Okay, number six. In American public schools, imagination and creativity are suppressed, not covenated. Children are conditioned to be left-brained by falling steps, memorizing data, and repeating it on tests. Or if they're unable to do that and they have a disability, like, you know, have a learning disability, um, you know, like um, autism, dyslexia, the teachers or the principal just grab them up, take them out of these regular prison style classrooms and put them in put them in special education yeah and just treat them like they're just broken defected products from a factory this makes them more left brain doormatted while ignoring the right brain which controls creativity imagination and free thought as a result they become robotic zombie like and dull and they carry that into adulthood they also become rigid 
and not as open to new ideas. That's the goal of the American system, unfortunately, which which treats everything as a business, including people. Deep down, people can feel in the truity that they've been suppressed and controlled into an inauthentic existence. That's why their faces look depressed, empty, and grumpy. Their life force has been suppressed and killed off. They can feel that something is wrong, but cannot consciously understand why. So they feel the constant dissatisfaction and emptiness. But rather than engage in introspection, they engage in consumerism and making money. But, but, but ultimately, none of, it, none of it leads to true happiness, joy, or fulfillment. Number seven, food in America contains more processed ingredients than in any other country. Just look at the food labels at the supermarket in America and you'll see what I mean. There are no many there are so many processed ingredients and additives listed that you cannot that you cannot even pronounce. Not so in other countries. And who knows and who knows what those GMOs Genuinely modified organisms from mustachios, which are now in most American food, are doing to us genetically. You've heard the saying, "You are what you eat." Well, if you, well, if most of what you eat every day contains a high amount of processed, artificial ingredients, then logic would follow that. You will become artificial and processed yourself, wouldn't it? Thus, the more artificial and processed you become, the less you will seem to be alive and soulful. Number eight, the architecture in America is dull and soulless. The buildings in most of the buildings in most of America, such as such as the architectural design of the suburbs strip malls and corporate offices have no style or creativity they look soulless empty depressing rigid and and conformist especially compared to the rich create creative colorful architecture in europe as a result the soulless architecture that surrounds americans must play a, must play a part in making them soulless as well since the environment rubs off on the people in it the lonely consequences of non conformity in regard to the, to these likely reasons why Americans seem so soulless the sad implication is that if you do not share these same qualities and if you are the free thinker with a soul, then you will be on a different wavelength and not be able to connect with others. As a consequence, you may be abstracted from social life and dating in America, leaving you feeling lonely, alienated and isolated. It will be hard for you to make friends, get dates or have fun. You, you, will, have a, you will have a hard time breaking into cliques which are mandatory to have a social life in America because as mentioned earlier people especially women are only social within cliques they don't go out and meet new people as a result life will feel bo- will feel as a result life will, will feel boring empty and depressing you will have no action in your life and you will be ignored and left wondering what happened to the myth of the wild of the wild open America shown in the media. Because the reality around is that everyone is closed and cliquish, especially women. However, you can simply pretend to fit in. You see if you are on a different wavelength 
or frequency than others. They, they will feel it and sense it too. They will get weirded out. They will get weirded out by you without knowing why. If you are on a polar opposite wavelength as them, they will begin to fear you. You will act as a mirror to them which shows them what they have really become, which makes them uncomfortable. After dark, after all, darkness fears light. But the above doormat traits do not just apply to Americans. I have found that they apply to Northeast Asians as well. By that I mean people from Taiwan, Japan, Korea, South Korea, and Singapore. <clears throat> These countries also suppress their people's souls so that they can become workaholics. Like Americans, they are suppressed, fear, live in fear and paranoia and limit their social life to within closed cliques. Hmm, really? Thus, they are not open, do not make eye contact with strangers, and are not relaxed. They prefer familiarity over novelty and are highly comfortless as well. Their mentality is one of groupthink. But as Aaron Russo said, groupthink is not think. In these ways, Northeast Asians are very similar to Americans. What's funny is that Northeast Asians are tricked by Hollywood into thinking that America is very open and wild, but it's all an illusion, of course. Thus, if you are a soulful, open-minded, free thinker, you will not fit in there. It will not connect with people there either, <clears throat> leaving you feeling alienated, isolated, and lonely as well. It will be hard to make friends, join social networks, have fun, or get dates there since your vibe and wave wavelength will be different from others. So I will I will avoid Northeast Asian countries as well. If you do not fit into such repressed comfortist cultures. Otherwise, you will feel obstructed and be bored there. For instance, in my native country of Taiwan, I noticed the same correlation as in America. Taiwanese live in a high degree of fear and paranoia and are, con are, and are conditioned to be workaholics with very few interest. They are focused on external milita militaristic, material materialistic things and are only care about practical issues. There is no focus on the, inter on the internal and no colorization of the soul. Thus, they seem soulless as well. Therefore, I cannot connect with Taiwanese either and feel obstructed, obstructed from social groups there. Their wavelength is way different from mine's. Plus, their social life is confined to within closed exclusive cliques as well, and the women do not talk to strangers. Sorry about the video being long. Next time I'll make shorter videos. And I don't care what other people think. You know, I, I can hear this now. Your videos are long. Make your video shorter, brother, and all of this. Well, it's my YouTube channel. I can do whatever I want. All right? So, I don't care. This is my channel. Please don't tell me what to do on my channel. If you don't like the videos, unsubscribe. This is a very extensive post from Winston Wu. Very extensive. A lot of packing. A lot of packing with this. You know, and reading that, it's all true. And it is. 
You have people in this country who want a social life. Um, men, they want a social life. They want friends. They want that. They want that. They want that dream girl, that special girl, to be in their lives. They want a girlfriend. They they want something. They want. They want all of this, but. They can't have it. They're, they're denied of this because of how they are. You know, they're not cool. They're not, I mean, they're not assholes. They're not bad boys. They're not chads. They're quiet. They're not sociable. Um, they were bullied and picked on at, at a school that they went to. They came from a dysfunctional family. A dysfunctional family, excuse me, and that's why these people become mass shooters and shoot and kill people. Because, because they're in so much pain. You know, I read something from Aaron Stark from him and he explained that he almost became he almost became a mass shooter. And he had he had he had a friend that got him out that got him out of that mindset. You know, he warned, hey, look, and he, he, and his friend told him, told him this, hey, let's play some video games. Hey, let's, let's watch this film. And Aaron Stark got away from that path of becoming a mass shooter and just, he went on to live a positive life. He graduated from high school and he's a father now. You know, and he talked about, all you need is love from from people and from your own family and no family dysfunction and he didn't get that it took it, it took a kind soul and his friend to pull him out of this mindset of becoming a mass shooter i mean if it wasn't for his friend He'll carry out the mass shooting and he'll be dead or in jail. He'll be where Nicholas Cruz is at. And, you know, I'm not going to condone, you know, I'm saying, you know, I'm not, I'm not for what these mass shooters do. I mean, I'm not going to name them. I just did. And, <clears throat> you know, I'm not going to sympathize with what they did to those innocent people when they shot and killed those innocent people because you know what they did is wrong but you know you know they had to express themselves to feel the pain that they go through in this country Americans being paranoid being cliquish and being in the clique you know it doesn't matter if they're regular people, police officers, the wealthy, any group of people. And they, yeah, they live in cliques. They're all about cliques. And they don't like to meet people, talk to people. And, and you got some Americans who will feel uncomfortable at you because you're not like them. <clears throat> like, for instance, okay. You're filming an old highway with a smartphone, right? You're talking about the highway. They're so paranoid. They'll tell you, no, don't film other people's houses. You get in trouble. People don't like to like you to film their houses. And I don't like that. I feel uncomfortable. You, you got people in America who are like that. Everything is creepy and uncomfortable and not right. You know. Yeah, you know. That's just how they are, you know. Yeah, like, you know, oh, like you, you yeah, you can't go up to someone and talk to someone. It's it's creepy. It's not right. Oh, then then I got my father. He sees this and it's normal. He'll just bring up, oh, whatever well, these people are killers. Whatever well, they'll kill you and murder you. Yeah, you just can't go around thinking that everybody is bad. You don't know. You don't know if, if that person is bad or not. You don't know. So it's just, it's crazy. It's insane. But you know, 
yeah, my dad, yeah, you know, and Winston Wu brought up, oh, people in 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 the in the nineteen seventies and early eighties, before the nineteen nineties, people in America were, were never this way. My dad will hear this and he'll say this. Well, they're not like that anymore. Those days are gone. Well, <laughs> well, it, well. It's still like that in other countries, so I can go to other countries and experience experience what America used to be back in the day. Seriously, you know, people like that in the U.S., they got issues, they got problems. And along with other people who like to talk bad to people and shit on them and put them down, treat them like shit. You know, and that's why <clears throat> we have so many mass shootings in this country. A person who's been held down and not get a leg up on anything, don't have a support system to help them, that to pull them out of what they are and become normal, productive members of society or get married for that matter. They don't have that. So they result to going crazy and making manifestos online and going to carry out mass shootings. Then you got these patriotic asshole Americans who don't give a shit about no one but themselves. But they care about you being proud to be an American. And, and talk about the Constitution and freedom. But they get butthurt over stuff like America remaining with England. And becoming, another, becoming a different type of country. Yeah, they're so triggered by that. But they don't give a damn about you... Um, being an American and having freedom and doing this, as long as you have freedom, as long as you're doing this and being patriotic, I don't care. As long as you're being patriotic, that's fine with me. That's so messed up right there. You know, these people with guns in this country who preach about freedom and be assholes, you know, they just, they're, they're so big because they were military trained, they were a secret service agent, they're conservative and they have guns you know and take all that away from them they're a bunch of cowards they're chicken shit they probably won't fight back against you in a fist fight yeah well, well, well without the gun without all that military training and secret service training to be a secret service agent to protect the president without all of that they're nothing and these people are worthless and they have no lives and they don't they care they they don't care about other people who don't have the freedom to go out and go to public places while getting shot at. They don't care about their freedom. All they care about is is their own freedom. America as I look at look at it, it's it's just it's just a country full of me 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 me. I'm selfish. I don't, I care about no one but myself. Greed hatefulness, evilness, and they afflict that on, on, on an individual who's been abused in a family, a dysfunctional family, been picked on in a school. These people, <clears throat> yeah, those people morph into mass shooters, and these patriotic Americans look at them as scumbags. They should be put down, and they're predatory criminals, and I don't have, and I don't lose sleep over a predatory criminal being killed. So, <clears throat> yeah, the way I look at it, I'm going to get off the sinking ship. I'm going to go overseas if I have the money and if I have the job. So, sorry about the video being long. I know I'm going to have some people going to complain this, going to complain to me about this offline, but, you know, I don't give a shit what they think. So, that's all I got to say in this video. Cheers.